this year's TEDx Mangal theme is to illuminate. And today, my goal is to shed light on what the future holds for us in terms of brain technologies that can enhance our capabilities as humans and eventually transform us into e-humans or superhumans. Imagine a normal day in future where you are using some sort of brain-computer interface that is not necessarily implanted into your brain. It could be a wearable, something that you could wear in the morning and take it off whenever you want, like your glasses or your headphones. With the help of your wearable, you can turn on lights, open doors, and control all the electronic devices around you just by using your thoughts. Neurotechnology has the power to build a world where no human would suffer from neurological and movement disorders, like blindness, deafness, paralysis, dementia, and depression. You can talk to anyone, anywhere in the world, in their native language. You can upload knowledge about any scientific field into your brain operating system. Or you can upload Kung Fu techniques, like Neo in Matrix. This might sound like science fiction today, as did the moon landing, computers, and internet a few decades ago. But the future is already here. We have around one million people who are using a type of brain-computer interface called cochlear implant, which is a very tiny electronic implanted device that stimulates the spiral part of the ear called cochlea to produce sound for people with severe to profound deafness. Deep brain stimulation is another promising example of neurotechnology, which involves implanting very tiny electrodes into specific regions of the brain to regulate abnormal brain activities. This technique has been approved by FDA as a treatment of Parkinson's disease, dystonia, obsessive compulsive disorders, and epilepsy. Amputees are already able to control their bionic arms just by using their thoughts, thanks to their neural interface. Recent advancements in brain-machine interface have been mind-blowing. Epileptic patients with neural interface could generate synthetic speech directly from their brain without saying even a single word. This year, a paralyzed patient with a neural interface could translate his mental thoughts of handwriting into a written text. Just last month, a chip was implanted into the visual cortex of this blind woman and allowed her to perceive shapes and letters. A monkey with a neural interface could steer a wheelchair hands-free just by using the thoughts. Another one, using a miniaturized neural interface, played the game of punk, only using his mind. Amazing, isn't it? But for neurotechnology to work, does it necessarily need to be implanted into your brain? Do people actually want to have a chip implanted in their brain? Some people are even suspicious about the COVID-19 vaccine, <laughs> let alone wanting to have a chip implanted in their brain. But let's do a little survey right now. Is there anyone here who wants to have a chip implanted in the brain? Wow, such a futuristic crowd. <laughs> I personally would like to have one, but not until it has been proven to be completely safe. Fortunately, great advancements have been made for non-invasive, portable, and safe neurotechnology. We have been able to turn our bulky devices into much sleeker, faster, and more user-friendly devices. For instance, this year Facebook, or now Meta, showcased a prototype of a wristband, it was a neural interface wristband, that understands 
and simulate hand movements, not only during and before the execution of the movement, but when users are just thinking about moving their arms. Let's pause for a moment and reflect how we have gotten here. From the earliest tools made by humans, using a stone, bronze, iron, to the creation of the wheel, algorithm, computers, AI, and more. We have used our brain to innovate. Now we have reached a point in history where we are using all these cutting-edge innovations to decode and transform our brains and extend our capabilities as humans. I believe fusing our brain with machines is somehow bypassing human evolution. Human brain physiology and its capabilities have not changed much for thousands of years. And we have not been patient enough to wait for the slow rate of human evolution to improve and restore our brain capabilities. But instead, we have chosen symbiosis with machines in order to accelerate the pace of our brain evolution instead of waiting for Mother Nature to do so. I wonder if Darwin had thought we would go that far. But now the big question is, will the future with neurotechnology make us more human or less human? Imagine a time in future where you have a brain operating system that connects to the internet and upgrade itself the way your cell phone does today. Or you can share your brain data with whoever you want. Your brain data is integrated with your social media data to build stronger artificial intelligence models that keep you engaged in their platforms for hours and hours. This time, using your brain and biosignals. Some of you may already be thinking, what if our brain data gets into the wrong hands? They would know about our emotions, feelings, even thoughts and beliefs. This is scary, isn't it? If our brain makes us who we are, then we have been practically stolen. But is there a way we could avoid this nightmare from happening? I personally think the answer is yes. As Paul Virilio, a French philosopher, has beautifully put it, when you invent the ship, you also invent the shipwreck. When you invent plane, you also invent the plane crash. And when you invent electricity, you invent electrocution. I'm quite optimistic that we, as a whole human society, will definitely find solutions for drawbacks of neurotechnology. After all, haven't we found ways to deal with e-crimes? Aren't we trying to find solutions for climate change? Of course, I hope this time will be faster. In order to avoid the risk of getting hacked, one solution could be to anonymously connect our brain operating system to the internet or not integrating our brain data with our social media data. We need to make sure that this technology is accessible to all members of society. Your kids should not lose the opportunity to work in their dream jobs because their peers out there have money and privilege that enables them to have access to brain-enhancing technology. Let's not allow neurotechnology to be the next big controversy like data privacy for social media. The prospect of widespread neurotechnology should raise ethical questions, such as privacy, autonomy, human rights. We should make sure that neurotechnology is used for the good it was intended to, rather than it become another source of power, distrust, and manipulation. Let's embrace the emergence of this game-changing technology and think and act seriously so that it become a tool that makes us humans that are more human, not less human. Thank you.